Hello, fellow travelers, and welcome to Bad Beagle Wargaming. Now, today, I want to give you a quick tour of my completed 28 millimeter scale Japanese Tenshu or Castle Keep, which I 3D printed using STL files created by 3D Alien Worlds. I'm going to say right out of the gate that I have no affiliation with 3D Alien Worlds, but I love their products and encourage you to take a look at what's on offer there. Um, I'll throw a link down to the 3D Alien Worlds website in the comments. Before we go inside, let's take a quick look at the castle exterior. Um, according to the designer, the castle doesn't represent any specific castle during the era. Instead, it pulls together elements from such castles as Osaka, Hiroshima, and Kumamoto castles. Here's a look at those castles along with the completed kit. The ground level is all about functionality. Um, I want to give a quick shout out to Small World Miniatures for their painting tutorial on how to paint stone walls, uh, which I use as a basis for painting the stone foundation of my castle keep. If you take a closer look at the foundations of Japanese castles, you'll see a variety of different colors of stone, ranging from sand color to brown to gray. Um, I, I just went for a bit of a mixture of stones on my base. The main stairwell is, is protected by heavy iron reinforced doors. Um, you can print those out plain or uh, even decorate them using one of the clan symbols available from 3D Alien Worlds. The stairs, uh, like every other set of stairs in the castle, are narrow in width and very steep. And in this case, funnel attackers into a narrow corridor where defenders can concentrate their defensive fire. Now let's follow those steps up onto the first floor. Level 1 contains six compartmentalized rooms with workable shoji and fusuma doors. Um, these doors are, would allow the residents to configure the rooms in a variety of fashions. Um, I anchored the outer pair of doors on every doorway to provide stability to the kit, um, but left the inner pair of doors on each doorway movable to you know, add some complexity to line of sight and build a degree of surprise into my gaming scenarios. Um, the central corridor gives a clear line of sight to any invaders emerging up the central stairway. Um, the corridor running around the edge of the room um, affords the advantages of privacy for the room's occupants while balancing out with a, an added level of security as these were usually used by guards um, who would walk around the outer edge for protective purposes. Beneath, beneath the windows on every floor are murder holes, um, which can be opened to allow defenders to fire a tepo, release an arrow, drop a stone, um, or otherwise tormenting the attackers down below. Um, the steep stairway in the central corridor will take us up to level two. Of all the levels of this Tenchu, I think the second level is my favorite. Um, I call this large room the audience chamber, and I can almost imagine the Great Lord holding a council of war or greeting visitors here. Um, since I envisioned this room serving as a reception room for visitors, I did my best to make it reflect the power and wealth of the daimyo. To achieve this, I recreated elements of gilded paintings from a variety of historical sites on the walls in this room, including Nijo and Himeji Castle. I really like the fact that virtually the entire floor on this level is wall-to-wall -to -wall tatami mats. Um, the raised dais is, is a little add-on that comes with another of 3D Alien World's STL bundles, but I think it adds a nice, authentic touch to the room and can be moved or removed as needed. This level also contains a secret doorway that the Great Lord or his bodyguards can traverse in the event of any foul play. Um, the small stairway in the corridor leads us up to level three. This level is pretty straightforward with its four rooms. Um, I printed out a couple of weapon racks from 3D Alien World's dojo files and loaded them up with some extra spears I had from Dixon Miniatures. Um, in reality, there were likely be many such racks in the castle bearing Yari, Yumi, and Teppo, as, as well as gunpowder hanging from small bags on the ceiling. Um, these two little racks are just my way of giving a nod to the concept. Um, plus, I thought, I thought they looked kind of cool. Um, let's follow this stairway up to level four. The higher we go, the tighter the quarters get. Level four contains just three rooms, but the stairways here are convoluted and would provide defenders with a nice opportunity to make a last ditch effort to delay an attack. Um, from here, we're up to level five, the final level of the castle. The magic of the top floor is less about the interior and more about the wraparound balcony. The interior is just seven tatami mats in size with decorative bell-shaped windows adorning every wall. 
Um, doors at each of the four compass points provide access to the balcony, which affords the Great Lord an unrestricted view of his domain. So there you have it. Um, here's a quick look at all the levels laid out on the table and then reassembled. Uh, and finally, let's take a quick look at the castle on the table with some 28 millimeter samurai sallying out of the main gate. In the future, um, I'll be adding some outer fortifications to my central keep. Every good castle needs some solid walls to, to keep the riffraff at bay. And here's a glimpse of that work in progress. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Um, so please drop me a like, subscribe to the channel, and as always, thanks for stopping by my channel and happy hobbying. Who's a good girl?